PC. Um, we have a, we're going to have a, about a 20 minute, uh, maybe 30 minute at most, just kind of run through around what's going on in the game. Um, and then I have a pre-recorded interview from a couple days ago with our graphics lead, Christian Knutson. Um, I know a lot of people might be interested in the uh, randomization that we're going to do for the retro event top four. So that will be one of the first things we jump into, especially those of you who have been patient <laughs> trying to help us troubleshoot, especially me, troubleshoot uh, for the last uh, 15, 20 minutes. But um, yeah, so that is going to be the slate. Um, we'll check in with Kessling another time. Hopefully we can get everything going so it's nice and smooth um, audio wise. But yeah, I, I want to talk to him a little about his PC20 Final Confrontation. Um, he is racking up some uh, Player of the Year points on the leaderboard, which I'll do a quick check with, which our good friend Taco Bill has been maintaining. So let me show this. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, Mike's had a couple nice performances so far. We have the leaderboard here that Bill just updated about nine days ago. Uh, Jeff Levine, who won Endors at first. Joe Olson, second. Mike Kessling, third. MHT, fourth. And our MPC winner, Drew Lichtenstein, at uh, fifth. And right down here, Bill's done a nice job of breaking this out between the North America and the Euro. So Timo right now is in first place for Europe. And of course, this is where, what, five months into a two-year stretch to determine who is going to play on the Outrider Cup in 2023. Sounds really long from now, but you know, there's only so many events. And we have lots of events that do have Player of the Year points. But, um, you know, the more you play in, the more likely you are... Uh, it, more you play and the more shots you get at earning points is what I'm getting at. But um, but yeah, so that's our uh, Player of the Year points leaderboard. Just want to do a quick check for that. The Retro event did not have Player of the Year points because this is an alternate event. But I think it went really well. Um, we had 40 people-ish play the maximum amount of games. Um, we had not quite as many as last year with the Premier Death Star 2. But I think um, part of that is the format. The Cypher Cards only is interesting. There's some reasons we did it, um, especially with the 20th anniversary of the PC, um, but it, it's a format that I'm personally not very fond of, but um, not really surprising that the KTOD players did really well. They, this was really when they were hitting their prime 20-some years ago and doing really well. So um, the way this will work is we have top four. I'm going to randomize, randomize them in just a few moments, who's playing whom, and they're going to schedule their games. I have the, up here the logistics um, and how that's going to work. Um, I'll do the random drawing. Um, deck lists are all submitted. The um, all four players submitted their deck list. I have them, um, so they're and now we're going to do the matchups, and they're going to schedule. And, and we'll not, not that I'm worried about this, but you know, just to be sure, make sure that everyone plays the same exact decks that they submitted in both the semifinals and the finals. Um, so over the next couple of weeks, is, then this is going to pan out. So right before we do the randomization, just want to reemphasize the uh, prizes. I know some folks are pretty excited. I think Brad Iyer had the idea of doing the battle order and battle plan shield as foils. I think that was how we got Greg Shaw to, to play and maybe some other players who might not be huge fans of the format, but get some of the cool prizes. So we'll be giving out some rares, giving out some poker chips, uh, these special foils, which uh, for, for better and worse, they're actually going to be sea slips. They're going to be foil sea slips, um, but they're they're going to look good. Um, they're part of the remaster stuff that Christian's been doing that we're going to, he's going to touch upon in uh, the interview in a little bit. Um, but yeah, foil sea slips are not ideal, but once you get them in there, once you get them in your perfect fit sleeve, they look really good. They're set for a while. Um, Hyper root navigation charts. Um, and I have two random giveaways that I'm also going to do tonight in addition to the randomization. So a couple of uncut sheets, a couple of PCL. Oh, I got to do that too. I got to do a lot of random awards. We'll do a, just two of them. And then these other ones, I guess I'll just do offline and announce later. Uh, Gemp series booster packs, which should be coming out any, uh, very soon. To full participants, I have uh, pretty cool Jeffrey Johns uh, artwork cards um, for uh, Padme and Queen Amidala here. And then the performance, so this is kind of what's on the, or not kind of, this is what's on the line here. Top prize is the Coruscant Dark Side Uncut Sheet, which is here. Uh, I don't know if that's really helpful, but um, you guys can hopefully see that there. Um, so the winner gets this. Second place gets a sealed EPP OB. Third place will get a shield sleeve set. Um, which are, they were the, don't, we had a couple extras. They were the donor incentive for, I think, tier four or five last year. You get 25 for each side. They're really cool looking sleeves. You put your shields in them and, and they look neat. Um, and because and, your shield sleeves can be differentiated from the rest of your deck. Um, all the top four get next generation PCXL deck boxes of their choice, glass trophy mugs. Top eight get poker chips and some good played rares. And uh, randomly to the fifth to eighth place finisher, they also get a shield sleeve set. So we're going to, we're going to do the pairings. The top four, 
And then we're gonna do these two giveaways and then we're gonna keep, keep moving. So here we go. Everyone bear with me here. So I got this wheel and we'll do determine who Johnny Chu is playing first. Um, so we got this, this cool little randomization thing. What I'm gonna do is click the mouse 10 times, look the other way, and then whoever I stop on, if it's two, it's gonna be Justin that Johnny's matched up with. If it's three, it's gonna be Casey. And if it's four, it's gonna be Steve Baroni. All right, so everyone uh, get ready. I'm gonna, one, 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. It is two. So Johnny is matched up against Justin. Um, so two two-time world champions, and then Casey will play against Steve in the other semifinal. Um, I, I, to no surprise of most people, obviously Johnny, Steve, and Justin are on the same, probably one of the most longest tenured teams in the game. Uh, the Kashyyyk train of dominance or domination, one or the other. Um, so kind of, this is gonna be kind of an awkward uh, matchup no matter what, and um, maybe in the semifinals and or final, but that's what the matchups will be. It'll be Justin versus Johnny, and then Casey versus Steve. And I, I just a real quick, the reasoning was with a cut to top four, random one amongst four. Um, we just wanted to avoid as much metagaming as possible. In theory, if there was four players who were not on the same team, you can, kind of to keep the decks a little more honest, if you kind of have to, in a way, be ready for three different decks as opposed to honing in on two for the semifinal. Like, we just wanted to try to limit that somewhat. But um, that will be it. Now, we're also going to do... So the players who finish 5th to 8th, one of those four players will get a shield sleeve set. That is going to be Chris Kelly, Michael Pistone, uh, Matthew Harrison Trainer, and um, Brad Kipple. So th again, these are the donor incentives. If someone was one of these four players who wins this, it was a donor last year, you know, maybe trade these, maybe give these to a friend of yours. But um, but yeah, I, I think they're really cool. I, I wish I don't have them with me right now. but I mean, I have them with me, but not right in arm's reach. So I'll do the same thing. I'll spin the thing 10 times. Um, if it's f five, it's going to be uh, Brad. Six is going to be Chris. Seven, Michael. Eight will be MHT. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. It is seven. So that is Michael Pistone. So Pistone gets. He was the. We had three eleven and ones. We had five ten and twos and one nine and three. Um, that was the highest nine and three. So uh, Pistone gets that. And then we also have. A shield sleeve set to one random participant outside of the top eight. So we had 40 total. So I'm going to do this a couple times. And then I'm going to check my handy dandy spreadsheet to find out. I just sorted alphabetical. So let me just do this five times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that is, looks like 31. Uh, so it's going to be the second to last person alphabetically. That is going to be Fiercer, which I believe, or I know, is one of Johnny Chu's sons so he gets the shield sleeve set okay all right so random giveaway stuff got that done we got the matchup done we're gonna kind of go through here i just want to try to keep this as uh quick as uh, quick and concise of an episode so some of you may have seen uh the stream that chris kelly and i did on monday evening on the father's day fundraising event um this is a really sweet event just want to give a quick plug because we just did a stream on this it's on the webpage. If you go to starwarscg.org, it's right on the right there on news. That's what this is. We're doing a fundraiser event. We're raising money for prostate cancer research, education, and healthcare of it. Um, it's a cause that jives with, as Chris was describing in the stream, you know, Major League Baseball does this, with, you know, the blue bats and everything for prostate cancer awareness on Father's Day every June. Um, so we're raising the money for a good cause. PC will match up to $50, $500. Um, and there's going to be some exclusive foils that are father-themed down here, these AIs. Uh, if you play 12 games, you will get physical AI foil copies, these cards. Um, if you play four, you get a jump copy, a digital copy that you can put in your decks. If you play eight, you get a Series 3 booster, and you get a second copy, which if you're playing like a 12-card hunt down, that's helpful, but um, otherwise, probably not. Um, just a quick update, we have over 20 people who've registered, and just the we've had one full day so far, and we've had over 20 people, I think 23 last I checked earlier in the day. And we're over $800 already. Um, and the PC will do 500 so we're at 1300 which is awesome and incredible. And everyone's really great. And I can't wait to you know, see this program through and basically you know, play games, get prizes, raise money for a good cause. So 
a great response to that. For so far, we still have you know 12 days to sign up if you want to hit the ground running on June 1st. There'll be a couple extra days to uh, to sign up as well. And then of course we're going to do a random giveaway like I just did. Four players who play eight games will be chosen to receive a Japanese Mar Jade foil. Um, so those are really cool. Um, those are going to be for special special items. Um, okay, so that is the Father's Day event. We did the DCO, we did the matchups. Let's check in the OCS leaderboard um, to see what's going on in the game right now. Let's scroll down. Uh, Drew Lichtenstein, who I think now is 33-3 and three for the three months in Season 1, which is incredible. Um, Tom coming off his PC20 victory is at 10-2 and two in second. Uh, Nias Nick Reich is at 10-2 and two in third. Uh, significantly lower strength of schedule, about 11% versus Tom. Uh, Greg Shaw, fourth. And we have Gavin, fifth at 9-3. and three. Uh, Justin can still technically... He might need, he's going to need some strength of schedule help to get up to second, but he already qualified, of course. Um, but there are Player of the Year points at stake for every month of the OCS, whether or not you have already qualified. So it uh, gives a good incentive for everyone to play. And, of course, Mike, down here at 9-2, and two, he's going to need strength of schedule help. A lot of it, actually, to break into the top two, but... Um, Never know. It, the month is only the 18th. Stuff can still move around, but but that's a lot. Um, so, OCS update for May. Let me make my screen a little bigger here. In case you were curious, I put this in Slack the other day, but this is Hondo Onaka. This is the AI for May. You get two copies if you play 12 games. You get one copy if you play eight. Um, quick plug: if you want to start in June, the June this one's this is this one's awesome. This is Plo Koon. This will probably bother Ryan Serson a lot, who says he really doesn't like lightsabers on non-EPP characters, but uh, I think this is worth it. So this is Plo Koon, Plo Koon V, who I, goes into like Qui-Gon communing, I think. He goes in Yoda communing, you can put him in there. Um, so, great pilot, he's got his own matching ship. So that is the OCS for June, which will be the first month of the second season. Um, and it'll be kind of a fresh start, because this first season's been some pretty incredible uh, win-loss records. Um, but yeah, it looks like Drew's in a really good position to qualify either this month or at, uh, or the at-large. I know Joe's been doing this scoreboard. We'll probably do for a scoreboard update. I know Ryan, my teammate, Sirson, is down here at like 2-0. Where's Ryan? Yeah, he's at 2-0, as is Bastion, who qualified last month. But I know Ryan's in, he's 22-2, and two, so he's uh, you know, going to be threatening to, to grab one of those, the, the at-large, because there's only one for each of the three-month seasons. All right, so let's see. Moving along here. Um, just want to do a quick shout out to their Retro League. They finished their game or their event two. Andy Talaga won, going 6 0. Sebastian Grenda, 6 0. Um, I streamed a couple of these games on the YouTube channel. Uh, check those out. That There's its own playlist. It's like Decipher era competitive events. Um, so I was able to stream a bunch of these on replays. I definitely want to stream. Some more of the, this league's events, games, um, going forward with uh, Craig Atkins, who's got a great uh, YouTube channel, very enthusiastic. It's, uh, it's Fatty, F-A-T-T-Y. Um, <clears throat> he's got really good streams talking about Star Wars CCG, and I know he expressed interest, and I'd really like to do a stream with him um, on these games, which I'm actually going to be playing in the PDS2 event. Uh, I like that format a lot, so I'll give a quick plug to that to sign up for it. Um, that was Premier to Hothel's event, too. We got about 44 people signed up. Um, cutoff is not for another nine days. So if you want to play in Premier to Death Star 2, it's free. Six games. There's prizes. Um, you know, you don't have to have done the first. It sets you back a little bit in the cumulative standings. But if you want to just play kind of competitive Swiss, one game a week scheduled with your opponent, um, this is this is a good fun league. All right. That was a retro league. Uh, let's see. I wanted to ask Mike a little bit about... I just want to do a quick shout out to the Geographic Leagues. Um, there are a bunch of them going on. You guys probably see them in Jemp. Bestman's got games. You have them for your outer rim. Um, so it's really neat seeing that going. I know a lot of the leagues are doing hybrid online and in-person events. Um, so and, and doing alternate formats as well, like all the Jedi. I know Pittsburgh, it seemed to be a big hit. Um, I think... I know Coruscant, my, my league, did all the Jedi. Um... And then I think I think Bestman was doing a premiere to Reflections too, um, so that, that's cool to see kind of alternate events, but also open and, and Java, which was recently updated. And um, we're doing a Java event right now for Coruscant. That's going to be a six-game Swiss. So so keep keep those up. I know uh, Sam Tashima, our league's administrator, is doing a good job with that, and he's in the process of making some pretty cool uh, swag for the regions. 
So um, next nationals, so that is less than two months away. Um, we need to announce the official COVID policy, which should be in a matter of days um, so that we can then get the event registration up and available in the store. We can get some banners going. We could finalize price support, do lots of uh, the logistics leading up to that. Garrett Larson has been leading that, obviously working closely with our tournament advocate, Chris Schoenthal. Um, but just want to you know build awareness for that now. There's going to be a Twins game, which is fun. Um, the AI for that event is going to be the Ray Asian Claws training course foil with like the border breaking, which is really sweet. And um, this is actually the deck that Chris and I did on Monday just to kind of flush it out, talk about it. Um, it was pretty cool. I, I got wanted to use some different cards and he had some good ideas on how to approach it. Um, but yeah, that is Nationals. Look for more news on that soon. I just want to do a quick announcement on the donations program. I, I did a couple of posts just trying to give an update, but long story short, we're still trying to get a couple of the incentives for 2021 printed, um, but it should be, actually, they should be done today, I think, actually. I'll, I'll check with Scott, and then by next week, start packaging those up to get all those who donated in the second half of 2021. Get your packages 100% out the door, finally. Thank you for your patience. Um, 2022, we have a lot of those incentives ready and i have this really cool this is the water bottle 20th anniversary um and i updated that exactly which things i have which things are in process um what things still need to be done but i think we're on track with that for the most part and expect to be on track with the announced timeline um these water bottles are really cool i don't know if you guys can see this is kind of awkward to do it but these say <clears throat> excuse me water so refreshing that it combats the heat of two suns exclamation point bottled by large moisture farm tatooine I got a little Star Wars uh, humor there, but these are these are good. I'm using, you can use them for like if you're a biker, just general water bottle. Good good use. Feel like pretty good quality. Um, so that's the donations program. If you do or if you are still interested in the uh, donations program, I technically closed over a month ago. I ordered a couple extras, kind of knowing some people might trickle in. So um, if you are interested, you know, reach out. I just want to make sure. I don't want to say you know donate and then not have enough. I do have a couple extras, but. Um, you know, I don't want to turn people away from supporting the PC and its mission, its initiatives, its objectives. Um, and this is the uh, the AI Corsant V Dark Side. Really cool. It goes in Black Sun decks. When you play it in person, you don't have to worry about the Jemp AOBS bug emerging. You don't have to worry about Jemp lag <laughs> since AOBS <laughs> can do that from time to time. Um, all right. So just a little bit more, and then we're going to jump into the interview. Upcoming states and regionals events. Um, we got Minnesota and end of June, Washington State's, Joe Olson's running that, end of June. Um, I know North Carolina State's is going to be early June, so I have to ship that kit out pretty soon. Um, I'm not sure the exact location, but that'll be North Carolina. Um, we also have a couple of regionals. Uh, Tula just had theirs, which I think Jonas Hagen uh, won. Look, they, I, I'm anxious to see the final results. Look, like they had a pretty good turnout, people from players from all over Europe. So that was Tula in Sweden. Uh, best wins now for a couple months. We're going to have the Coruscant one. I have to actually get that posted um, in August as well. Uh, we got Botha Wooey, which is less than, or exactly a month away in Nebraska. Maybe Chris Kelly will go back. I think he won last year. Um, maybe he'll go back and defend his his title. Uh, Naboo in England, end of July. Endor is going to be the same day as Bespin. And uh, I'm sure there'll be more of those. And there's unique prize support, which uh, you don't have to get the kit, but it, it's... Only $25, comes with travel vouchers, comes with PC swag, um, and yeah, uh, good stuff there. So, let's see, I showed off all the stuff, I talked about a bunch of things, hit the interview, or uh, <laughs> hit all the items on the agenda. I think that's about it. Um, so yeah, we'll jump into this interview, just I'll give a quick background here. So this is with Christian Knudsen, who is from Denmark, he is our graphics lead, became it officially maybe four months ago. Um, He's done a lot of great work. Um, you know, he succeeded Ming, who also was a great graphics lead, um, and obviously the graphics team. To no one's, um, no, no one should be surprised just to see all the great stuff that uh, they've been doing lately. Um, I, I talk about it in the interview, but they've been really, really great with a lot of different marketing stuff, the AIs, the card images themselves. Um, it's just, it's really, really great. So I just want to talk about his background and, and hear his story, and hear what's uh, going on in the graphics world. So. Um, I think that's all we have. Uh, I'm gonna just fire up this interview. I'll stick around. Please let me know if you, I'm gonna type in the chat, hey, can you hear it? Just to make sure. I've done this before without issue, so hopefully this doesn't have the uh, the complications that for some reason me hosting another person always seem to have on my really annoying uh, Mac. 
All right, so that's it. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. Thanks for your patience. If you were one of the live people dealing with kind of our test before, um, we're going to segue into the Christian Knutson interview. And then um, I'm not sure Dan's going to be back next week. We'll, we'll figure it out and announce the agenda, the guest, the co-host, uh, all, all that fun stuff for next week, May 25th uh, episode of Hollow Theater. All right, thanks for tuning in. Uh, may the force be with you. Jared here. I'm here with Christian Knutsen, our graphics team lead. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, Jared here. I'm here with Christian Knutsen, our graphics team lead. Um, we are going to have a, a pretty pretty action packed uh, interview here to talk about the various and awesome things that Christian's been doing as the graphics team lead and as he um, has been working on the graphics team for a while um, to hear about his background and uh, and I think it's going to be a great interview. Um, obviously, the community is very aware of how amazing um the, the graphics team work has been lately um so yeah so that's just our, our kickoff here christian how are you doing today i'm pretty good how are you I'm, I'm doing great doing great so um yeah so we're filling in for dan this week and um we're gonna you know maybe, maybe a few more weeks so i i'm, I'm looking forward to having um, folks on and interviewing and talking to them as, as dan has done uh, such a great job with um in his time on hollow theater um so it, yeah um, so with that, so let's hear about what's your uh, background experience? How did you get involved with the game? Um, well, I uh, in high school, I had a friend who was really into Star Wars. And he uh, he one day introduced me to this pack of cards he had, he had bought. Maybe it was an entire box. I, I don't quite mm -hmm. remember. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, of course, Star Wars cards. And we played a few games with them. And uh, I lost most of them. <laughs> And but then I, I figured out the power, it's all about power, right? So mm -hmm. I made a, a space deck full of uh, Star Destroyers and I won my first Star Wars game. Nice. And then I was pretty much uh, hooked ever since and stayed on until definitely Huff. I don't think I was in involved anymore when Dagobah came around. <laughs> but uh, well, but, the fun started. But, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I think I missed all that fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but 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 I certainly remember uh, when a new hope came out, the first boosters, and and mm -hmm. calling the the local game store like every day to to hear if my my pre order box had arrived. So <laughs> so I was hooked then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's nothing quite like opening packs, which I think is um. You know, one of the great things that Kevin's been doing and making the packs, and obviously you have been an integral and in, you know helping those images get refined. Um, and yeah, people just love opening packs. There's, there's no uh, no similar feeling really. Um, so then, were you kind of involved in the game during the Legacy era, um, or is it more of a recent thing you've come back? Uh, Recent-ish. Uh, I think I came back about four years ago. Okay. When I don't actually remember how I found it, but I found Gimp and watched. Mm -hmm some games and played some uh, some shield games mm -hmm. and then i joined the forums and casper uh, one of the danish guys mm -hmm. uh, saw my name and thought it sounded danish knutsen <laughs> so he so he wrote wrote me a, a personal private message oh, and asked great. if i wanted to, if i wanted to play uh, irl uh, mm -hmm. and at first i was like uh, now again this is fine for me because i know if i get involved in something like this it's i can't do like Mm -hmm. fast <laughs> yeah I so hear for you. the first months or so i i didn't I did. <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. yeah. I, I didn't want to play, play and i didn't have any cards so so mm -hmm. that was also a, a bit of a hindrance but then I, I i after a couple of months i i i took them up on that invitation and uh, and crashed their small group of, of star wars players and uh, borrowed some cards and i've been playing ever since pretty much yeah that's four great. years ago i think yeah, I actually met uh, Casper. I played against him at Worlds in the team tournament in 2018 here in right next door in New Jersey. And I remember I teamed up with Eric um, from the Netherlands and we were playing against Casper and Christian Lund, I think. Um, yeah. Who, is he also Danish? I think he lives in America now. He's Danish. I think he lives in New York. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I heard a rumor about him having a kit, so maybe he'll come back to Denmark mm -hmm. to take advantage of all the <laughs> yeah. good stuff we have here for families. <laughs> yeah, much better benefits over there. But yeah, it was Definitely. fun. It was, it was a really fun game. He had that um, QMC tripler deck, and I remember I attacked him oh, at Bespin yeah. and I ended up like losing by a ton of force but but yeah and that's uh one thing i definitely want to ask about too was just the you know the danish community um yeah so casper you a few others i know you said you were doing some uh play testing with the folks leading up to the um 
Ryloth Regional, right? Which was this past weekend in, uh, in Malmo. Tula. Tula, I'm Tula, sorry. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of Ryloth yeah. is the Dutch. Yep, Tula. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Jonas won, I think I saw in the forums. He did. Yeah. He did. That's great. He's a good player. We had a, a like unofficial Danish championship last year. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we have to be eight players for it to be official, and we're only like five or six. Okay. So it was unofficial, and, and he won that as well. So he's a okay. pretty good player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is Jonas Hagen Norgard. Is that his name? His full exactly. Name? Yeah, yeah. I've played him a bunch of times on Jump, and yeah, I've seen he's had some pretty nice performances at um, different European events. So yeah, so good for him. Um, so yeah, so I guess uh, let, let's segue then to talk about your experience with graphics. So you came back to the game about four years ago, and then presumably, obviously, you have some they have a background and special skills that evidently um, in the, the graphic space. Um, so how'd you get involved with that? Well, I, I think my Star Wars graphics work started because I didn't have any physical part cards to play with. Mm -hmm. So I had to make my own cards and print mm -hmm. them. <laughs> yeah. but, but we can't probably talk about that here too yeah, much. No, for, for kitchen table, <laughs> that, that's fine, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I got involved in a more official capacity when Eric Lance started working on mm -hmm. the new UI. Right, right. Uh, and I saw his post about it on, on the forums and suggested some, some icons and made some icons and just to, to give them in. And, mm -hmm. and then we started writing PMs back and forth. And I pretty much ended yeah. up doing the graphics and, and the UI, UI design for, for the new UI, at least when it's actually in a game. Yeah. Um, and then I played around with doing a new foil effect for mm -hmm. GIMP. Yeah. Uh, and I made a, a thread on the forums about that. Uh, but I quickly realized that in order to, to have this overlay be exact for each card, uh, each card has to be uh, exactly uniform, uh, like all, all mm -hmm. characters have to be in the same placements and so on. So I started uh, working from uh, the, the strange way scans. There's, there's a user called oh, strange yeah, yeah. ways. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I saw those, yeah. You uploaded uh, of the cipher scans and I started working on them. And, and adjusting the colors and positions and all that stuff for those cards to make them uniform. And mm -hmm. then some graphics guys saw that and uh, wanted me to coordinate more with them because they were also doing some stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And then I pretty much get, got brought on board for graphics. And this was mm -hmm. around set, set 15, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. And Ming was and, the lead at that time, right? Yeah, or, yeah I believe he was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, or was that 16? I can't remember. It was around that time, definitely. Okay. Yeah, because I know Chris Menzel's always been really involved with graphics, right? Chris and Kevin, Yap, and yeah. uh, I think Tomas and Flores. I think we're also maybe 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 just Flores. I mean, um, but yeah, it, it's a pretty pretty nice team. Lots of good guys. Um, yeah, they've done amazing yeah. work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, no, I forgot. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it'll come back around. But yeah, yeah. let's um let's segue in a little bit. Um, because I mean, the, gosh, I, there's just like I said, I, we get so many awesome compliments, uh, especially lately with just the what, what graphics is doing. But let's talk That's about great. this is a, this is an announcement in the announcements forum about, uh, and you made this uh, really good comprehensive post about the virtual set remaster. So, hmm. um, would you mind talking a little bit about that that process, that initiative that's been going on for a little bit now? Yeah. Uh, the initiative was, was already kind of on the way before I got on board, uh, where it was just about, well, just about, it was going back to all of the older sets and, and remastering them in high definition. But, but then we figured out that we also wanted to, to update the templates a bit. So we, we really went into detail and, and focused on all the, the, the other funds for the lore and all the ital italic text. Uh, nailing the fonts mm -hmm. for that and uniforming all the, the icons and the placements of the icons. So we had like templates that were as close to the, probably the cipher cards that, that we could get. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've started using those for, for the remastering. So there's like two aspects to it. There's the templates themselves and then there's the card images. Um, right. Uh, right. And, and, and for the most part, we'll we're using the, the same card images. Uh, sometimes we're upscaling them mm -hmm. uh, to make them a res uh, because we, we can grab from the PDFs, the pretty high res there. Uh, right. And then like for Ray, Ray mm -hmm. is an example of that. Um, I know the folks who went to the Endor Grand Prix, um, and, and those are going to be more on the way, but I know like Ray was one of the first examples of that. Yeah, that, that's uh, exactly. That's an updated image uh, mm -hmm. where we, we took the, the 
the basic element, the Ray cosplayer, and then mm -hmm. added a new back and polished it up a bit to make it look more like, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's been called the JJ Abrams Ray. Yeah. So that's, I don't, I'm not sure if that's a compliment or if that's <laughs> a criticism, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's higher risk, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such a strong, good card in so many decks, but but yeah, the, the image looks great. Um, so those are going to be gradually going out. You know, I see that it's a, it's a really cool initiative with graphics and proofing. Uh, team is doing a lot of work with that, led by Chris Hull, um, aka yeah. Joker King. So, um, yeah, th that's really just neat seeing kind of this this tweaking and just have some have a, a lot of consistency that's going to come out of this process. Um, and yeah, and some of the some of them are are already on Jump, right? The the remastered images. Yeah, set fifteen has been released, and we have the uh, three more sets that are pretty much ready to release, and we're just okay. waiting on some some stuff for that. Very cool. Yeah, and and for if you're just a you know casual player on Jump or any player really, you'll, you'll notice I think they really pop, and that everything's just more clear. You know, there's some even a lot of the cipher cards, um, which is going to be my next question actually. But you know, sometimes you're looking at the images on Jump, and they're not super clear, super uh, easy to read. But I'm sure that's going to be gradually changing, which is pretty exciting, right? And then are the yeah. decipher cards going to be gradually you know higher res on Jump as well? Yeah, they will be eventually. Uh, mm -hmm. We have like three steps now. And the first is all the virtual cards. And then mm -hmm. we will do uh, decipher cards with errata. Mm -hmm. So we can release right. an updated PDF of all the, the errata slips. Mm -hmm. And then when that's done, then we'll do all the remaining decipher cards. Mm -hmm. and that, that's quite a lot. There are quite yeah. a lot of Star yeah. Wars cards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's probably, I mean, I think the unique cards, I think you take the virtuals, I think we're close to, you know, close to 4,000. Um, yeah. And then you get, you know, foils whiteboard. I don't know where they play into this process, but um, I know like the new UI uses some whiteboarder cards, right? Um, or, yeah, I, I think I, the image system themselves are also whiteboarder for whiteboarder mm -hmm. cards. Of, but there's this black border that's drawn on top on GIMP. Right, right. So I'm, I'm hoping that eventually we can remove that border. So we'll mm -hmm. have like the, the crisp border and black and white and the correct border for each card. Right, right. Um, yeah, no, good stuff. So definitely excited to see how that um, process um, moves along. Um, I, I just want to make sure everyone's aware. So obviously Christian's done such great work. He is one of the uh, seven Advocate Award winners for 2021. And then of course there was the yeah, um, right. Advocate of, uh, uh, the Volunteer of the Year Award which went to Adam Fletcher, our, our current technology advocate. But I mean, you know, me as the marketing advocate, I know I'm always reaching out to you about different things. And I, I think that I just want to make sure the community is aware that, you know, Christian was it did the hardest parts of the whole deck boxes, which people absolutely love um, in generating those images, which we could talk about a little bit more in a minute. But um, also I know a lot of these really cool, like I call them like accomplishment or event specific foils where we imprint something up into the, the lore, which are really neat. Like for example, the advocate award winners or, you know, state championships or regional championships, um, all those different things that are outrider cup champions, which uh, a few of the European players who are on the outrider cup team um, just got. So, all those things I think are really, really neat. Um, and the uh, sleeve artwork, of course, with um, the uh, PC 20th anniversary sleeves. And of course you were, you know, the, the reason why that um, for the PC 20 event that the card backs were updated. So, you know, all the yeah, different yeah. Alter alternate images. So I'll, I just wanna make sure the community is aware like Christian and his team are doing just such great work and there's a lot more exciting stuff coming down the pipe as well. Um, and then one other thing, and by this point, uh, you know, we're filming this on, on Monday, but the, everyone will be aware of the Father's Day cards um, and that event, which are really awesome as well. I know you worked with Chris Kelly in developing those as well, right? They'll like my father before me and I am your father, B. Yeah, exactly. He pinged me on Slack and asked <laughs> if I could find some more AI images. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing I, I know you've been very open because like, you know, I think with the general process, kind of look behind the curtain here. You know, design will ask you for certain cards or maybe marketing as well for certain AIs, maybe they want uh, for certain events. And then you guys kind of go from there. It, it's because it's so much work. And like, I think you described one time, like 75% of the work is just finding the image, working with the cosplayers, going back and forth or yeah. the artist. Um, so maybe one, if anyone's interested in graphics, you know, feel free to reach out to Christian um, on the forums or on Slack and express your interest. But that is definitely the, the part that involves a lot of the work. But, you know, we, it's on us on marketing design to be like, hey, we need cards for these things. Can you then go find them, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And, and then once that happens, then we can take the next steps of, of, of getting them developed. But, but the idea is the first step. Yeah, and it's, it's always fun finding excellent images for, for mm -hmm. new cards. It's 
pretty rewarding seeing a, a card mm. really come to life with a mm. with a stunning image. So it's great work. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of these, like I, I think a lot of the uh, the Ray themed ones recently, like Be with Me is amazing, and like the Destiny of the Jedi, all those ones. And I think one thing that you know, I think if some people are just coming back to the game, let's say they were involved in Legacy, my understanding when I look at some of those Legacy PDFs is that pretty much everything was like a, a C slip or a half slip. They're very rare full slips, and now we have tons and tons of full slips, which are obviously look great, but they're also <laughs> practically easier to cut out than than those pesky C slips, right? <laughs> um, yeah, we yeah, we try to 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 get full sleeves where we can. Like mm -hmm. if if it's a a new card with a new title, then we'll mm -hmm. do all we can to 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 find a new completely new image for it to make to make a full mm -hmm. slip. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can't, but but we we try as much as we can, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and then I said that. So the deck box is obviously a lot of people love them. The six designs we have: Ahsoka, Radis, Ray, Vader, uh, Blizzard Eight. Um, I'm probably missing somebody. Kylo, oh, Kylo, Kylo yep. Yeah. Um, so, you know, can't promise anything on those, but just given the positive feedback and given, you know, we have a process now to get those, um, you know, maybe we do a series two, the way that Decipher did the uh, Jabba's Palace official tournament sealed decks where they had six different ones, right? Um, that would be, that'd be pretty exciting. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. That reminds me, I have to check out um, some of the images. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I just, I mean, I'm sure everyone, and, and one thing that we kind of mentioned cash in Slack, I don't know if this will kind of emerge as a possibility, but you know, maybe, you know, working with you and you understanding, you know, what images are best for that. Um, maybe we have a short list of, of a bunch and then maybe if somebody wins an event, a big event, hey, they get to pick from a certain list. And yeah. uh, that oh, I think cool. would be really neat. Um, so, so yeah, and I think, you know, and those deck boxes, they've been flying. I think people have been really involved in the OCS and the different major events um, like Euros and upcoming Worlds, those upcoming, um, but also the donation program and the uh, couple of various different other reasons how people can earn them. Um, so that's I cool. I just saw a couple of YouTube videos of guys mm -hmm. opening uh, their donation packages and yeah. the boxes look great. Yeah, <laughs> really yeah. <do>. yeah they're <laughs> awesome. And and speaking of your advocate award, we, we got to track that down because I did send you them and then as it's kind Don't of my fault. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that, yeah, worst case scenario, we will we will send a replacement um, package, but I'll work okay. with Martin. Um, but yeah, that's one of the reasons that all the, the eight advocate award winners um, got them for exceptional volunteerism. Um, I've been trying to do giving them away for performance and participation. Some are in participants for certain events. So they're you know, trying to create as many opportunities as possible. Um, we, uh, they're all in my garage. I wouldn't be uh, <laughs> gradually working. How work many did you order? I'm just curious, how many boxes did you order in total? Yeah, so we did 60 of each of the six. So 360 boxes. Um, okay. So, um, you know, the it's, MPC. It's a good thing in the garage. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we're working them down gradually. I think uh, to no surprise or not to no surprise, I think people might, might get a, have a hunch that I think Ahsoka and Radis have been the two most popular. Um, and they're also included in the league kits as well. Um, so people, um, you know, are leagues in, in the U.S. and in Europe that have been doing them and, and the Outer Rim League as well, which is kind of like, um, you know, open to anybody globally, really. Um, so, yeah, so we're, we give those out to the organizers, to the winners of the league and also to one you know, one diligent or um, whatever reason the league organizer wants to uh, give it out for. So people really like them. I'm personally amazed that uh, some people are really interested in getting three, four, five, six of them. Because part of me is yeah. like, once you get like <laughs> one many, or two, what else yeah, do you How many do things do they play? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, from talking with like Hayes Hunter and I think Justin Desai as well and probably Joe, I, I think I've heard from all of them that they're, they're really good for, you know, obviously folks get on airplanes, they travel to events, they want to bring kind of the, a few decks. So maybe they put, you know, two or three decks in one box, two or three in the other. They're a little more, um, I guess, malleable within a suitcase than like a third right. anthology box, which people use a lot. Um, so yeah, so, and of course there's a collecting aspect to it. And if for no other reason, just a card storage aspect too. Um, so yeah, so those are, those are the deck boxes and, you know, uh, we can't promise it yet, but I have a feeling given the response that there will probably be a series two of those. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, and then uh, I guess did you have any thoughts personally on the uh, the virtual image bracket challenge that Dan run through the face ah. ran through the Facebook group? I think the top yeah, that was several. Fun. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> I think Ver Verge of Greatness won. Uh, Old Man Luke uh, did really well. Um, did you have any personal favorites in that that you were maybe surprised that went further than you were expecting, or vice versa, ones that you thought were going to go further that didn't? Um... I think the new flip Vulcan on Mitch was probably my my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but and then it got knocked out by old man Luke, and that's yeah. one of my favorite uh, yeah. virtual card images. So that was yeah. perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, it, but but it's it's, a... it's fun to see what what kind of images uh, people liked, uh, mm -hmm. and I think some of the votes were maybe necessarily about the images, but also just what kind of characters and <laughs> and cards they liked. But yeah. but it was definitely fun to see what yeah. what how it worked out. Yeah, there was, I think, kind of like a purposely ambiguous definition of vote for the better image. So forever, yeah. you know, maybe some certain images meant certain special things to certain people or um, maybe just the concept of the card itself. But yeah, I know there were some really tough ones. Like even early on, I, the one that stuck out to me was Hera um, versus Din Dejar. And I thought those are two two excellent images and they were matched up. I think it was like in the round of 16, I want to say. Um, but yeah, the old man Luke, and that's actually, I think, a former uh, Decipher guy. I think Mark Tuttle is the cosplayer. Oh, really? Um, yeah, yeah. And he's active in the cool. Facebook group. Um, really good guy. I've had a couple interactions with him. But that that image, yeah, it really sticks out, like, especially on like Jump, because a lot of times Luke is at his own location, especially like in a Legend deck, for example. And the way Jump kind of like auto sizes cards sometimes that, you know, it's like a, you know, it's a very like a profile picture of the um, of the card. And then on Jump, it even makes it, it, it it's a great card. Um, and it's it's great image. and a great yeah. card. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely, yep. Um, so yeah, so we have a couple more minutes, I guess, just general in terms of outlook. I know we've touched upon um, uh, touched upon the, the virtual set remasters, I guess. Any other uh, things you want to touch upon and kind of going forward with uh, the graphics team? Um, we're slowly gearing up on set, set 19. That, mm -hmm. That's going to be really exciting and a yeah. lot of great images for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, the remaster set is going to be released. New one there. And uh, actually, Ronnie, one of the guys that helps out mm -hmm. with the graphics, is already working on, on the Decipher Ratha cards. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll kick that over to proofing at some point. Mm -hmm. so that will be uh, probably about a 1,000 cards they have to prove. Yeah. So, so good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So is that from, so, there's that there's that PDF right on, on the virtual card section of the web page, right, that has all the Decipher errata? Yeah. And they're all like half slips. All those are, every single one of them is getting, okay. Yeah, and, and the, the full cards. We're doing the full cards and oh. then just cut out, out the bottom for the for the PDF slips and then use the full card for GIMP. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So so that'll get a high res uh, as well. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. And that's, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, just... that's way That's a way, mm -hmm. way off. That's a yeah, <laughs> I totally understand that's probably a ton of work. Um, but yeah, and that's just, uh, it kind of underlies a lot of the, the great volunteers in the PC that, Putting lots and lots of volunteer time and effort to you know, do whatever they can to make the game more fun, look better, feel better, all that stuff, right? It, it's so crazy, and, and when you get behind the scenes, you really realize how much work goes into this from all uh, all the teams. And mm. It's pretty crazy what what the, the PC is doing to keep this game alive. Actually, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's twenty years, and like I, I said a couple times, like I'm just like very grateful that you know I was on a hiatus. I didn't play the game for close like fourteen years, basically. Um, and I'm just really, really, really thankful and happy that, you know, a lot of the volunteers who put their time in during that time to make sure that it kept going, keep the seat warm, so to speak, and, and keep the, uh, the game going so that now I'm kind of a lot of things just aligned to make the game really grow a lot lately. It's uh, the infrastructure is there. And, uh, and a lot of those folks who did a lot of that volunteer time, <laughs> some of them deserve uh, some good time, you know, some break yeah. here and there. But, yeah, so uh, they can actually play the game because when you're volunteer your, your actual game time really plummets so <laughs> yeah oh yeah i, I yeah <laughs> i used to play a lot more uh, before i be, became an advocate but I, I i wouldn't trade it i'm really happy and even like the pc20 event like i didn't play in it but it was brought, brought me just as much joy to see everyone else playing it and it brings me a lot of joy to get these prizes out to people which obviously your team the proofing team the design team all the different the tournament teams everyone's just involved in having these great events giving out cool uh, prizes to players and, and seeing the joy um, when they get this stuff. And especially especially the stuff like like we talked a little earlier that are kind of personalized or imprinted that are really like, hey, I got this for this reason. And um, yeah, those I think are the most poignant um, prizes that we do. Um, Definitely. But yeah, so that's that. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, this is, I think this was a really good uh, interview and I think uh, folks will be happy to uh, put a put a face to a name and, and thanks for coming on christian and talking about graphics thanks and your experiences me. yeah of course um and yeah so uh i guess we'll, we'll sign off here but thanks once more and thanks everyone for tuning in and uh not sure if dan's gonna be back next week it's probably gonna be me maybe one more time or maybe someone else um on the uh the 25th of may for hollow theater but thanks again everyone and uh you take care